Hi everyone, I'm Ali Grayman. Today we're doing OCD Q&A. This is for members only. Um, and again, the reason why we're doing it for members only is because I want to get to every single question and I don't want to have a situation like before when we had 200 questions and I can only answer a certain part of um, them and then people complain. So that's why we're doing it for members. So first question, uh, hi Ali, I'm extremely sensitive to noise and my room makes crackling noises almost every night due to the change in temperature in my attic and possibly the sound is coming from the walls as well. I sleep with a box fan, even with that I can still hear the crackling and popping sounds. This makes it really hard getting to sleep at night because the slightest sound will keep me up and thinking about the sound about to happen will give me anxiety and make it hard to fall asleep. The volume of the noise is definitely something that would not affect people without OCD. Is there any ERP exercises I could do to disregard the noises at night when going to bed? Fears of not sleeping is very common for people with OCD. I've had a lot of clients who had it and came out of it and um, there is actually quite a few things you can do. So in terms of the noises, I would say you need to habit obviously you need to habituate to the noises, meaning Play them to yourself all day, like put them uh, on, uh, record them and play or record or have like similar noise. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff like that you can find on YouTube and play them back all day. So you're not shocked and surprised by uh, hearing it at night. Um, that would be one. On top of it, at night, you can uh, do a little bit of a sleeping uh, meds. I would do uh, natural because you don't want to get into chemical stuff, really, if you don't need to. Um, you can if, 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 you know, you need to, but it's, I, you know, in my opinion, would not suggest it. But there's melatonin, there's valerian root, there's so much you can take to just bring the level down. Because when you are laying down, and like you're saying, you're in that anticipation of the thoughts or noises coming in, and then the thoughts coming in, and you're going to get anxiety, and then you won't sleep right in anticipation and all of that you're you're going into fight or flight mode cortisol through the roof adrenaline through the roof wide awake right so to combat that taking a temporary sleeping aid would be um helpful and then as you are doing exposure work to it you will start to see that you kind of need less and less of it and then like taper it off um but i would say that being exposed to the noises is key and when you're exposed to the noise you're not like rationalizing it you're just saying okay it is what it is i hear the noise it's ocd the fact that it bothers me is OCD. the noise is real the fact that it bothers me is ocd all right i need to habituate to it so you're accepting it as it is taking it in and doing nothing about it so that's the exposure and response prevention but doing it just at night right when you're trying to go to sleep doesn't seem anywhere like enough i'm a big um uh, proponent on uh, doing recovery work all day long you know I, I don't if when you have OCD obviously you know that OCD lasts all day um, if you're doing recovery work one hour a day you're not even budging it you need to be doing it all day so the more exposure to the noise the faster you will get through it and I've had clients get through the sleep thing quite fast, actually. But it's and then uh, also what is behind the whole sleep thing, right? Like, why are you afraid to go to sleep or why? Well, sorry, why are you afraid not to fall asleep? Is it because you're afraid? A lot of the times people will say, well, what if I go insane if I don't sleep? Try to view it instead as, you know, people don't sleep for various reasons. Nobody goes insane from not sleeping. It's normal. You will not, eventually your body will just shut down. So even though it's this kind of a little bit of a reassurance, but you also need to um, at least hear the reality of the situation. If you look at, for example, women post-birth, right? Um, because the baby keeps crying at night. They're not sleeping. I, I'm a mom of two, I can tell you. They're not sleeping. So... If I didn't go insane, you will not go insane. Productivity level the next day will be on the low side, not going to lie, but that's just something we need to accept, right? So if the combination of lowering stress hormones at night, seeing, well, even though OCD makes it very difficult to understand the reality of the situation, but seeing proof that, look, all these people didn't sleep, they didn't go insane, they didn't, uh, nothing bad happened, right? Um, 
and doing exposure work all together should uh, get you out of it. But be careful because OCD is not really attached to a specific theme. So themes can shift from one to another. It doesn't have to be uh, the same um, same theme all throughout uh, your process of having OCD. So anytime you get a thought on a different topic, right, especially to do with noises, um, like sensory stuff, right, be very focused on disregarding right away. But with this situation, uh, I would say job one would be to record the sounds and do as much exposure as possible all throughout the day. And then all the other stuff kind of comes with so that we talked about, the sleeping aids, all the other stuff. But the exposures all day long is critical. And uh, one more note on exposures. You shouldn't view them as um, ultra important. I have to do them just right. If I don't do them right, I will never sleep because that becomes OCD as well, right? So we're holding on to recovery but loosely. We're doing exposures, but not placing too much importance, right? So keeping your distance, keeping your bubble um, intact, right? Not getting going too far with these things, okay? With perfectionism and all of that. Just a side note, some people experience that, some people don't, but just in case. Thank you so much for your question. I hope I answered it. Next question. Uh, Hi, Ali. In my OCD harm-related past memories, the most worst feeling that comes in is feeling of despair, desperation. I mean, OCD says, if you've done it, you do not deserve to be happy anymore. Like there is no sense in anything. As I understand, this feeling is just OCD feeling. Yes, of course it is. Um, And I need to treat it as another OCD feeling. Yes. I feel like that OCD just wants me to reassure myself again that there was a, that there's sense in life and in many things and so on. Or OCD also wants to analyze that or another situation in the past to a very detail to reassure myself that it is not as bad as it, and it happened because of this and that going on and so on. So if I do that, like telling myself it is not so bad, um, this seems like a reassurance and I feel worse. Okay. So first of all, you need to distance yourself from these thoughts. Do not give yourself any more reassurance. What I suggest, and it's very, very important. I know I go on and on about time tracking, but the reason why I go on and on about it is because of how successful it is. My method is, and I'm not saying it because it's my method, but because it really, really does work. Um, As somebody who's had OCD and understands the hell that the person is in, I want my clients to recover in the fastest time possible. I don't want to have a client for 10 years, unlike probably (laughs) a doctor or a therapist. Um, But I want them to recover in a month. And for that, you have to do a lot of recovery work. So just like we were saying with the first question, right, with doing exposure all day, you have to track how much time you are ruminating about the situation. This is what's called real event OCD, where something happened, but it's so minor and you're creating a giant thing out of nothing. So, and the more you ruminate, the worse you feel about it. So instead, what you want to do is just leave it alone. I and leave it alone from a, not from a position that you feel comfortable, but from a position that you're choosing, forcing yourself to let it be and tracking how much time you are kind of falling into rumination. Because from time to time throughout the day, you will fall into fall back into ruminating. But how much time you're going to fall back into ruminating and not just logging, reducing each day. So little by little, you're reducing that rumination time. So, for example, if let's say you are in the worst possible state, ruminating 180 minutes out of 180 minutes, because we track in three hours, right, through the app or however. So, to reduce to zero, I always say this because this puts it in perspective for people, because people in the moment, they're like, I'm ruminating all day long, Ali. How can I possibly stop if I'm ruminating all day long? Well, all day long in three-hour increments is 180 minutes, out of 180 minutes. If you reduce each 180 minutes by 10 minutes each day, so reduce by 10 minutes. So day one was 180, day two is 170 max, day three is 160 max, and so on and so forth. Your anxiety will start dropping. As you are doing this recovery work, little by little, you will start to feel better. And all in all, it's 18 days. Now, let's say you fall down a lot, you have setbacks, stressful life, blah, blah, blah. 
okay, let's say, I don't know, 30 days with almost half being, a, being setback days. That's still 30 days for you to get out of this hell. But so the more I do recovery work with clients, the more I see um, how important accountability is in OCD recovery. That it's not about uh, um, some sort of it like special, even like special um, process or special method. It's really just putting in the work day in and day out tracking all day, reducing all day, if you're doing compul physical compulsions, reducing physical compulsions, avoidances, right? Reducing avoidances, but making it your full-time job. And when you start to do it that way, the need to ruminate and the need to uh, figure it out and the fear, that fear that you feel potentially in the pit of your stomach that or or in your chest so this is like, you know you can't breathe kind of fear right it starts to go down and you start to see it realistically right so step by step i promise you as long as you do this you will feel better your level of anxiety is at the same level as your uh, power up that you're doing in your case rumination so if rumination is through the roof anxiety will be through the roof and the brain adjusts the anxiety to match what you're doing. If you are ruminating very little, you will start to see that the anxiety is slowly dropping. But the anxiety drop follows the, your reduction in rumination. So say you reduced rumination today, tomorrow, the anxiety drop will be maybe like a few days after that. So it's not like instant. Sometimes um, I have clients who tell me, a lot of the time these are clients who are younger, they'll say, Ali. I have disregarded all day. Why am I not recovered? Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Brain is a physical organ, and as a physical organ, it's it needs time to heal itself. It's not going to be a day, right? Um, so try to view it. Um, try to view it that way. That it's going to take time, but it's not going to take that long. Literally, give it all you got in the course of a month, but at the same time. Um, don't hold on, like what I said with the uh, previous uh, question, don't hold on too tightly. Because if you start to go into the situation from a position of, I got to disregard, I got to disregard right now, okay, I'm, am I disregarding perfectly? And you start to wind yourself up in the proper, perfect disregarding, you're creating an OCD about OCD theme. And then you'll be wondering, why aren't the thoughts going away? They're not going away because you're placing so much importance. So holding on loosely, like, yeah, I'm doing recovery work. Thought comes in. Yeah, I'm not going to pay attention. Yeah, I'm not going to ruminate about it. No, I have better things to do. Kind of loosely uh, from a Zen whatever perspective. And it's fake it till you make it because obviously you don't feel Zen or whatever about the situation. But as you are acting like it, the brain, that part of the brain, it works like a machine. It won't be able to tell whether you're faking it or not. It's just looking how much fuel you're giving to certain things and whatever you give fuel to grows, right? So you have to be very conscious, but not obsessive, not too far. Um, about where is that energy flowing, right? So gently guiding it away from OCD thoughts. Like it, it, you got onto the OCD thoughts? No, no, okay, no, what am I doing next in life? Uh, okay, I have to go do this. I had a plan to do this. Okay, I'm going to go do that. So you're kind of gently guiding yourself away and being focused, not obsessively, but being focused on reducing the numbers. The numbers are reducing the rumination numbers are your top priority not the thought not how you feel not how you felt in the moment not what you know you, what else you remember just the numbers and as you reduce the numbers you will start to see that all that other stuff it will fade right out but again over over time not in the same day i hope you find these um, answers helpful. Thank you guys so much for your questions. I will be doing more of these Q and A's um, and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you uh, would like to do one-on-one -on -one recovery program with me, all the information is on youhaveocd.com.